With the walls up and the concrete placed, it's time for other sub-trades to complete their work. We'll start with the electrical installations. There are any number of devices you can use to cut chases for electrical wiring and any necessary plumbing. Two time-proven tools for creating electrical chases and fixture box openings are an electric chainsaw with a nose wheel and a hot knife. The chainsaw will provide the perfect chase for a friction fit, while the hot knife can be configured to cut any shape. When fitted with a wire, it produces box shapes easily and to the right depth. The fixture box can be secured in place by fastening it to the concrete wall with a self-tapping concrete screw. As an alternative, you can attach a flange-mounted box to the furring strap. Another thing to watch for is the installation of fixture boxes in walls created with 4-inch forms. Remember the EPS panels on 4-inch forms are thinner than those of other forms. When using 4-inch forms, take time to pre-plan fixture box locations. Before placing concrete, cut an appropriately sized rectangle in the EPS and push it back just enough that there will be room for the fixture box in the finished concrete. Use spray foam to hold the cutout in place. The subcontractors that I use in my building business, I use the plumbing contractors, mechanical contractors, electricians, drywall folks have adapted well to the product and, it, and find it very easy to work with. Uh, we provide the penetrations that they need when we pour the wall. Uh, they come in and run their equipment, run their lines, and then the drywallers hang the drywall directly to the product and it works out real well. We're almost ready to apply the interior and exterior finishes, but first, let's take a moment to talk about waterproofing and parging. The easiest way to waterproof ARCS forms is to use a peel-and-stick waterproofing membrane that goes on just like wallpaper. Start by making sure the wall is clean and dry. Then snap a chalk line to show grade. Before placing full sheets of membrane, run 8-inch vertical strips of the material along each of the corners to give added protection and durability to these sensitive areas. Now measure and cut full sheets of the membrane, allowing enough extra length to reach the outside edge of the footings. Pull back about four inches of the membrane backing and line the membrane up so that one of its vertical edges follows the vertical lines of the forms. Stick the upper portion of the membrane down, starting at the chalk line. Gradually peel off the backing and fasten the membrane to the wall by wiping it downwards as shown. If the weather is cold, you may need to use a heat gun to help the adhesion process. When you get to the bottom, work the membrane around the corner formed by the wall and the footing and continue to stick the membrane down until you reach the footing's outside edge. Subsequent strips of membrane should be overlapped a minimum of two and a half inches. The required overlap is indicated by a printed line on the membrane surface. Arcs Wall Systems recommends you install a protection barrier once the membrane is in place. The barrier stops the membrane from being punctured during backfilling and provides it with long-term protection. The most cost-effective way of creating a protection barrier is to use the plastic slip sheet that comes under ARCS form units. Alternatively, you can use other sheathing available at your local building supply center. ARCS recommends you backfill within one week of installing the membrane in order to protect the membrane material from UV degradation. Parging takes place before the exterior cladding goes on. Parging covers the EPS foam and protects it from grade to the point where the exterior cladding begins. Apply parging in three simple steps. After the wall surface has been cleaned and prepared, use a wide trowel to apply a skim coat of PrepCoat B2000 or other EPS compatible parging material. Use the trowel to embed fiberglass mesh into the skim coat while it is still wet. The mesh adds strength and durability to the finished installation. 
If you have previously installed a waterproofing membrane, extend the mesh two inches over the membrane to form a water shedding drip edge. When the initial coat has partially dried, apply a second coat of B2000 over the mesh and leave it to cure. Be sure to fully embed and cover the fiberglass mesh, including the water shedding drip edge. You can either paint the finished surface or leave it as is. Well, we've almost finished our building. In a moment, we're going to come back and discuss the finishing touches. But as I worked with the architect and realized that we could still use the stucco, we could still put the brick uh, wainscoting on, and those were all pieces that the design committee was very adamant about. They wanted a building that looked different. The outside of this building is gorgeous. The, the community takes a lot of pride in the exterior appearance of this building. You can see it from any road when you drive in, and everyone is very proud of it.